matchup. It was actually Santa Barbara a year ago that defeated the Eaters on yep. their home floor, so they're no stranger to success here. I really like this matchup of two powerhouses in this conference. In the center circle, Johan Traore jumping against Bent Loishitin, and we are underway. Santa Barbara with the opening possession. These two teams met two weeks ago inside the Thunderdome, and the Anteaters picked up a 15-point road win, which is tough to secure in any conference. You know that. Now, a big win for them, but these teams have a history with each other. A.J. Mitchell's the reigning player of the year in the Big West Conference. Out to Cole Anderson, who really needed that. He made six of nine triples the first time these two played. He's only made a handful since. That's a good sign for the Gauchos for him to knock down his first one. And it's three for his last 23 until that one. Here's Pierre Crockwell, the second off the mark. And trying to save it from going out of bounds there was Andre Henry. That's a great hustle play. I, Cole Anderson had his hands on the ball, didn't grab it with two, and obviously the Anteaters made him pay. UC Irvine starts the night, 19-7 overall, 12-2 in the Big West Conference in first place. They've got a one-game lead over UC San Diego, and they've got a showdown with the UC San Diego Tritons on Saturday on the road. Off the turnover, Mitchell has it, and the first to guard him will be Justin Hone, and they're going to get a block there. Empty possession for Santa Barbara. Hone, catch and shoot three, and he's fouled in the act of shooting. Good spirited start here in the opening 59 seconds, huh, Coach? Well, I like it. You know, you don't want to make mistakes in this game because both teams will come back in transition. But you can see here that, you know, that was a great play in transition. Always beat teams down the floor, and then it was just a little bit of a, a, a touch foul. But, you know, the official's right in front of the official. You're going to have a touch foul. Don't do it in front of the official. <laughs> right. Do it somewhere else. A.J. Mitchell got called for the foul. That's his first, and it sends Justin Hone to the free throw line. He's the Anteaters leading scorer at almost 13 points per game. Well, you can see the confidence his teammates have there in transition. Not many people get the green light, but he just pulled up from three with no uh, no hesitation. It's a kid from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. He stepped up in his fifth year at Irvine, playing in his 107th career game. Russell Turner gets a lot of guys that like to stick here and be developed. Well, and that's something you want to do if you're building a program, Steve. You've got to really build continuity, and you don't do it with, a, with changing uh, light bulbs. You've got to keep guys <laughs> intact, you know. One-point lead for the Gauchos on the road. Matia Belich handles. Yeah, they're on Cole Anderson now. Good screen up high by Traore, who rolls off of it. He's a great shooter, and he misses there. He doesn't miss that much. Now he's got to learn to take his time, though, and get, get the foul. And in transition, a drive, and... We're going to have a whistle and another foul against Santa Barbara on the defensive end. And look at this dynamic here. That's the second already on the reigning Big West Conference Player of the Year, A.J. Mitchell. Well, now Joe Pastor has, and the staff have a decision to make. Do you leave him in? Uh, hopefully keep the game close. Do you let him play? It's, it's kind of tough to let your best player... Yeah. Uh, you know, foul out, but at the same time, you don't want him sitting on the bench. So he gets Jason Fonten at the second up the freshman from Phoenix, and he'll come in when play is dead for A.J. Mitchell. What a dynamic in the early going. That's Devin Tillis. He was defended well in the lane. Gauchos 14 and 11 overall, 7 and 8 in the Big West. And Traore with another miss. Two big misses in the early going well, from point blank range. And you hurry yourself when you've got big players. Lois it's in off the bounce. Well, how many times has that happened? Big guy makes an intimidating play on one end and gets involved on the other. <laughs> you got to reward the big guy, yeah, don't you? Feed the big dog. <laughs> Let the big dog eat. Got him. <laughs> yeah. One point lead for Irvine. Here's Josh Pierre Louis, the senior guard. Over a thousand career points. And Belich over the top of two defenders and a soft little touch there for well, the Serbian. And, and see, that's the shot that's going to be there. If you're going to get into the paint, you got to pull up. You're not going to get all the way to the paint against this anti eater defense. Cone through the defense. Missed with a right hand off the window. Mitchell, they're still unable to get him out. He's playing with two fouls, and there's going to be a reach in on Justin Hone. A.J. Mitchell's something special. Reigning Big West Conference Player of the Year on the Lou Henson watch list, but picked up two fouls 90 seconds into this one. Well, he's a player that really, 
you know, not only does he, as we mentioned, score, assist, but he's got a, a mentality. That's what the pro scouts like about him, Steve. He's really calm on the floor, sees the floor, has size, uh, and, and he's really an intelligent player as well. Gosh. Joe Pasternak, rather, got him out. And Traore gets fouled underneath. That's a foul on Bent Loishatev. Well, watch the difference here, Steve. The shot, the ball goes inside. Look at the post-up position. And now he takes his time, absorbs the contact. He simply hurried his first two, hurts footsteps. This time, point blank, he did not hurry himself. Has a chance for a three-point play. Well, Traore is one of the top shooters at 58% from the field, third in the Big West, but struggles from the free throw line. Three point lead for the Gauchos on the road. These two teams finished 15 and 5 in the conference a year ago. Henry missed, got his own rebound, and gets his own second chance opportunity to go. Well, how about the second effort you just mentioned? Andre Henry, the senior. Just stayed with it. A lot of players need to see that. You, you know, you get your shot blocked. You stay with your shot. Just keep keep pursuing. He's a guy that scores 10 a game. Having his best year scoring. Cole Anderson got knocked over. Traore out to Anderson who made a three early. This is a deep two. Misfires and rebounded by Tillis. In transition. Crockrell. He's a great assist man. And he's going to get one there and count it. Irvine's got the lead on a little magic here. Well, how about the, the, the peekaboo by Pierre Crockrell, the transfer from Pacific. We've seen him in his career, how much he's progressed. He's the ultimate team player, Steve. He really gets his, his team to play, stirs the coffee, as they say, but really an unselfish player. Six assists a game. That's good for top 20 to, in, in the country right now. It's phenomenal. 160 assists on the season coming in, just 60 turnovers. Those six assist a game, number one in the Big West. And Hohen's going to get a chance to get the offensive rebound, and he knocked it out of bounds in front of the Gaucho bench. Well, you can see Coach Pasternak, uh, you know, he's he's really demonstrative. He wants his guys to grab the ball on the defensive end with two hands. You know, it's okay to tip the ball when you're on the offensive end. In fact, you teach yep. your players to tip. Defensively, you don't tip. You grab with two. Otherwise, you take a seat next to me. <laughs> that's how. That's the <laughs> easiest way to get your point across. All right, A.J. Mitchell in foul trouble on the bench since the 17-14 mark. Anna Barber was up a point when he went out. They trail by one now. Off the bounce, catch and shoot three there by the replacement for A.J. Mitchell, the freshman, Jason Fontenet, the second. Well, that's Pierre Louis, who's played point guard when A.J. Mitchell was injured throughout much of the first part of the game. Here's Darren Saran. Welcome to those of you who just watched Troy and Arkansas State. Steve Quist, Ben Braun, and welcoming you inside the Bren Center. It's first place Irvine against Santa Barbara. Big West basketball here in late February. First place Irvine is tied right now with Santa Barbara at 10. The interesting story now for our new viewers is that A.J. Mitchell, the reigning conference player of the year, picked up his second foul 90 seconds in and has been on the bench now for the last two minutes for Santa Barbara. Well, he's sitting now, Steve, but I promise you he won't be sitting all half. Josh Pierre-Louis, a terrific score, terrific shooter at 55%. Step back won't go. And in transition, here come the Anteaters. Crockrell, no look pass inside to Saran. Picked out three Henry. And another offensive rebound. They've gotten a number of those here in the opening six minutes. And Crockrell has got another assist as he feeds Carter Welling. Oh, will remain on the Gauchos bench here for the time being. Almost six minutes into this first half. Well, count on the score. When the game is close, Steve, you can afford to have your best player sitting and protecting himself. If the game starts to get away, he will be in the back in the game in, in, uh, in no time. His replacement was Jason Fontenet, the second, and he hit a big three. Here's Ariel Bland. Wow, gliding right in for the basket. Well, they've got some big guys that can take it to the basket. They're very aggressive. 
but so is the, so are the Anteaters. They've got some big guys as well. Glantz a 65% shooter. He doesn't shoot that much, but when he does, it goes down. He averages six and a half points, a little over six rebounds a game. Saran off the window, the freshman from Turkey. Well, I love the calmness again with which he plays. Just kisses it off the glass. That's just great uh, knowledge of where you are on the floor. That's how they get it done in Istanbul, huh? And that's going to be a turnover. Stolzberg turned it over. There's Joe Pasternak, seventh season, and he picked up career win number 200 last Saturday when they beat Hawaii at home. Well, how about his career, too? You talk about Russ Turner and Joe Pasternak just, you know, dominating this league for years, but he's averaging 24 wins a season. That's not too shabby in six years going on his seventh year. Saran lost the handle on it. Welling, Johnny on the spot, though. Dylan Thorner is now in for the Anteaters. And we're going to have a travel call there on Langston Redfield. That is turnover number two. By Russell the, Turner, 11, uh, 14th season, rather. Well, he's six-time coach of the year in this conference. That says a lot. Big West, very respectable conference, some great coaches, great teams. And I've known Russell since his days back. Yeah. In Wake Forest with Dave Odom, just a tremendous coach, a tremendous competitor. He's as intense as you want to find, but yeah. one of the top coaches in the country. <laughs> He's fiery. He wasn't shoot around today. He really wants this one here. I think he wants everyone. Fontenet looking to Bland, who's picked up by Ufiri Uajujele. And what a great pass, Bland. Big guy feeds big guy. Triori with a dunk. I always thought big guys are sometimes your best passers when they're feeding their, their buddies. Uh, that's just great, great uh, chemistry between those two. The big dogs are eating and feeding each other here. Around the screen, and what a terrific pass. This is a really good team at sharing the basketball as Carter Welling's got another dunk. They're nearly 16 assists a game. Now that's phenomenal, but they worked on that at practice today. Just not only the ball screen, but rolling their guy under and trying to get to the rim. Louis to Bland. Yuji Dujeli picks him up. Former Chino's Hill player. Has played with the Ball Brothers for a year and a half. Good defender. Left open Pierre Louis for the three, and he drops it. Well, when he can do that, Steve, that's a real threat for their team because that's not his strength. But when he knocks down the three, he's a tremendous driver, probably the best driver on the court. Yeah, again, a 55% field goal shooter. That's a deep two there. Saran followed his own shot. And it's going to stick here with Irvine. Last touch by the Gauchos. Well, how about the interior looks? How about the drop-off dime underneath? And then here's that screen. The roll right to the rim, the ba bounce pass underneath. That's a really good execution of the pick and roll. You'll appreciate this, Coach. We're not even a full eight minutes in. Already six assists in the game for, of all teams, the UC Santa Barbara Gauchos. We told you how good Irvine is at sharing the ball with almost 16 assists a game to lead the Big West. Well, the, the Gauchos have been shooting at about 50% all year long. Thurner missed it. And Thorner, by, rather. And by the way, that's one of the tops in the country as well. So 50% from the floor. Anybody would like those percentages. Welling knocked that away from Traore. Thorner ahead. Little Euro step there from the Turkish player. Well, Cole Anderson had a chance to at least stop the break. You've got to step up and either uh, maybe take a foul or take a charge. But you can't let your opponent get to the rim right there. It's tough in transition. You're playing... Uh, from behind. Quick four for Darren Saran, the freshman from Turkey off the bench. At the start of the game this year, he averages 10 points a game. Traore got position on Welling inside, but Welling is able to grab the miss. Well, again, you know, you you, you got to take your time. It's hard when you're playing against bigger players. You tend to hurry yourself, and that's what he did. One point lead for Irvine. Owens progress sealed off. Thorner to Welling. A little battle in the post here. He's going to try and face up on Traore, who made it awfully difficult at a turnover. That's some tough post defense right there. And speaking of turnovers, stolen back. Saran drives in and is fouled by Cole Anderson. Two shots are coming. 
That's going to take us to a break. When we return, we'll get you fired up for the upcoming Big West Conference Tournament by Lavos. Yep, uh, they brought him back out. Or do you, you know, because you, you don't want him to get stiff either. So he's got to have foul discipline. You have to trust your best player to really uh, not go out there and commit any silly fouls or pick one, another third one up. Yeah, his break on the bench was a little over six minutes. And now he comes back out out of the media timeout. There you look at the reigning conference player of the year. Second leading score in the Big West at almost 20 a game. Well, and how much respect does Russell Turner have for A.J. Mitchell? They spent a good portion of their practice, yeah. as you know, Steve, today just really talking about ways to not maybe stopping him but slowing him down. They, he said, look, he's going to get some baskets. You're not going to stop him, but let's not give him what he wants, and let's not let him get his teammates involved. He played two games last week with the flu. One was a road game down at UC San Diego. The other, he had a bum ankle as well. That was against Hawaii. They really fought through it. He's a tough player. He missed the first two games of the season to open the campaign. And Mitchell's going to take the three and miss off front iron. That's his first field goal attempt of the game. And Crockerell just getting really fast, almost turned it over, but luckily got it back. Well, he plays at another level, doesn't he? Well, he can he can change speeds. He's tough. He's low to the ground. Tough player. Good entry pass inside. Welling against Bland over the top. But he gets to the ball. That's Dean Keeler, rather. Beg your pardon. Well, he's pretty tough at 6'11". Grad uh, student, you know, he's he's been around as well. So uh, you, you've got to really appreciate uh, what, what they have, Ir Irvine. And that was partially deflected there by Keeler, who leads this team with 29 blocks. The headband kind of <laughs> messed me up. And But they're all interchangeable at the five spot. It's amazing. Crockrell, and nobody was there. Turned it over. He was looking for a cutting Keeler. And Anderson looking for a second triple. I was talking about the Twin Towers over there. Uh, one just shed his headband. I was he, just going to say. He, he, he left it there as a souvenir at the other end, Steve. Now I really got to concentrate. But the five spot for Irvine, you'll love this, between three guys, Bent Loishiton, Carter Welling, and Dean Keeler, they're averaging 21 points a game, 13 rebounds, and three and a half blocks. Now they're also averaging about seven foot height. <laughs> they're big. Yeah. Now there's a foul. It wasn't too long ago where they had three seven footers on the roster. Yeah, so Turner's no, really good at bringing those guys no, in. No, no surprise if you if you know Russ Turner. He likes his big guys. Uh, you know, he's a veteran coach from the NBA. Coach at Stanford. Coached against him on many occasions. And uh, joked with him today. Had a chance to hire him, and I didn't pull the plug. Boy, was that a, was that a miscue. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we, we've been pretty good friends since. Remember Mamadou Njai? Oh. I, have a, I have a photo of him from the Wooden Legacy where he's like seven foot six. Rockwell the second missed. It's a one and done there, rebounded by Bellich. Yeah, this rivalry, you know, Joe Pasternak was coaching with me at Cal when Russell Turner was at Stanford, so this rivalry, these two guys go back. Deep, yeah. We've had some battles. Bellich feeds Trey Ori off the window and count it. Yeah. Now he's trying to figure it out now, and maybe the Auburn transfer has. Now look again. You know, you can see what he does when he gathers. Here's the screen. Here's the roll. He takes it here. And again, he just, he absorbs the contact. You've got to be willing to do that if you're a big guy. You can't let contact change your shot. You've got to stay with it and try to get some hand ones. First foul on Dean Keeler. And Traore knocks one down, completing the three-point play. Well, much to the dismay of the crowd behind us. How about the student section, by the way? They, they were here an hour before the game. They got things going here at the Bren Center. They've done an excellent job. Yeah, three foam fingers. Irvine with a two-point advantage. Seven for Traore to lead the way. Rockwell to a cutting Andre Henry. That's going to be knocked out of bounds. It's going to stick here with the Anteaters. Again, one of my pet peeves, you know, why not grab the ball with two hands, not one? I just think players get lazy sometimes. you got to put two hands in the ball. You won't let it go through your fingers. Devin Tillis averages almost 10 points again. That's out, and it's going to stick with Irvine here, but they'll have six to shoot. Well, I like the quick hands of the Gauchos. They're really getting their hands in there. They're, they're, they're making it tough. For the Anteaters to get to the basket, Joe Pasternak's team really active defensively. And they have struggled at times with their defense. 
Here's a drive by Hone off the window over some lanes. Well, you see why we featured him in the open. He's nope. just a veteran. He's been, been able to go to the glass. That's just a tough shot. He makes it look easy. 45% shooter. Hone has six. Him and Saran have six apiece. Traore off the dribble. Spins over the top of Keeler, and another one off the window is good. Well, he's improved, Steve. If you haven't watched this young man play, he's gotten better as years gone on. Again, 58%, which is third best in the Big West. And the answer on the other end by Crockerell the second. And he does what he takes what the defense gives him. You penetrate to the middle. You don't try to overextend. You just pull up at the free throw line. Defense gives you that. You take it. Russell Turner loved him before the game. He said, you know why I love him? Because he's crazy like me. <laughs> <laughs> if you know Russell Turner, he's telling it like it is. But he, he said, yep. yeah, he said he's a kid that he didn't, he didn't have an even attempt a three-pointer. He just wants to get others involved. He gets home involved here, and a transition three is good. Wow. Seven-point advantage. Baker, when it, you have a player like here, Crockwell on your team, he can make he can separate you know, from whoever you're playing. Second senior year here at Irvine after transferring from Pacific in the WCC, where he played three years. We played for Damon Stoudemire, and Damon yep. Stoudemire uh, uh, is the one that really recommended him to Russell Turner, yep. and, and and Russell Turner knew Damon from from his NBA days as a coach, so that yep. was a pretty good connection for him. Yeah, same kind of style too, like a little point guard, right? Which Damon was at the University of Arizona. But a tough-minded kid who had a 16-assist game against Bakersfield did Crockwell the second earlier this season. Bland came up short. Crockwell, no fear. It's a one-on-three, and it's tipped in by Tillis. Well, I love that the big guy's running the floor. That's what you want to do when you come back in transition. You have numbers. Your numbers help you when you get to the glass. That's when you can make, them, make it pay dividends for you. Irvine's built a nine-point lead here. Just under six and a half minutes to go. Anderson sealed off by Henry. Treori is usually pretty good from that spot and right on cue. Well, when he does that, he's really multidimensional. You know he can score inside, but he's really improved his game to step out to that free throw line. He's got 11 on five of eight shooting. Seven-point lead for the Anteaters. Trying to remain in first place in the Big West Conference. Loishatin back in. Tillis drives on Bland. And with a left hand. Wow. Right underneath Bland. Well, how about the dexterity by Devin Tillis, the junior from L.A.? Shows you he's able to get to the glass and use either hand with the finish. And he dropped 13 on the Gauchos in the first meeting on 6 of 9 shooting. His career started at UNLV. A.J. Mitchell still looking for his first points. We're at the 533 mark. Let's go back and revisit this here. By well, here's Phillips. the drive. You know, you, you, you hesitate. You get to the rim. You spin. You come back to your offhand, and you score it. And that's just really good footwork. You know, it's important to have footwork and balance when you're playing. You've got to keep yourself on balance. Pete Newell always said that it, it may be the most undertaught skill in, in basketball is balance and footwork. Gaucho basketball. Needing a bucket here. Belich feeds Traore underneath. He's going to get two from the free throw line as he gets fouled by Bent Loishatin. I like what Traore does, Steve. He really spots up. You know, you present yourself. You get your hands ready. You find out where your where your teammates are going, but you get yourself in a position to get to the rim for either an offensive rebound or a chance here at some free throws. So really important you do that. You know, we talked about the big guys in this game, and Irvine's got some big guys, but uh, Santa Barbara's missing too. They definitely have two guys that, that we'll get back and talk about them, but that would be starters for them now. We have five college basketball games Saturday on ESPN of the app that start at noon Eastern, but we're highlighting these three games. Two top teams in the ACC square off at 4 Eastern. Number 10, North Carolina host Virginia. Then it is Texas in number 9, Kansas at 8 Eastern. Two SEC teams get after it. Number 5, Tennessee hosting Texas A&M. Should be another great day of hoops. I can't wait. You know, we talked about the rebounds. That, you know, Irvine's dominating the glass right now, but they've got some good big kids. And 
and the, if you're the Gauchos, you, you know, you're going to have to wait a year. Coach Keith Tong, who is a tremendous player, played for him last year, 6'10 yeah. sophomore. And they have a seven footer, Messiah Oakman, uh, out of the CCS up in San Francisco, a seven foot junior. So with those guys back in, I think they're going to be able to match up and give some teams some fits inside. Yeah. But for the time being, nobody's going to feel sorry for you, right? No, you're re- reigning <laughs> champs NCAA, yeah. so you you know, and uh, that happens. You know, matriculation injuries part of the game. Cohn drives, kick out, Saran, and he missed Bland with a rebound. And for Ariel Bland, he's fifth in the conference with just over six boards a game. And I say no one's going to feel sorry for it because the Anteaters lost their top two scores from last year to the portal. Mitchell, and he throws up the air ball. Now you figure it out, and, and that's what you have to do. A little too fast. Irvine's playing at a pace they can't keep up with right now at times. Steve, these have been the top two teams for the last several years, pretty much dominating this league. Yep. And there's some other teams that are knocking on the door right now. Obviously, UC Davis has been doing well. They've got UC San Diego having a great year. But these are the teams, the top two teams. They've been there. They've, been, they've won championships. They've been in the NCAA. So you really got to give these two teams, tip your hat to them. Back to that point on Irvine, losing two guys to the portal. D.J. Davis is at Butler. Dawson Baker is at BYU. They both scored 15 points a game last year for UC Irvine, who went 15-5 and five along with the Gauchos in the Big West. And then it was Irvine bowing out in the semifinals to Fullerton and the Santa Barbara team winning the conference championship for the second time in the last three years. Uh, it's, it's been competitive. This league is certainly a, a very competitive conference. Mitchell looking for that screen there. Evans Caputo is in, and Mitchell's going to make his first field goal of the game. It comes inside of four and a half to go. Well, he can pretty much get that shot whenever he wants if you don't step up and you hedge and get out and have a, a, a second player. Six-point game as they go inside, and three officials. Nobody's made a call yet. Now there's a foul. But there might have been a travel. Yeah, me too. That's why I was waiting to see. Our officiating crew, Tony Padilla, Jeff Ketchu, Tom Nally. It's a veteran crew here for this Thursday night Big West affair. I think Joe Pasternak is trying to suggest the travel over there, but uh, might also got pushed. Matia Belich is going to get called for the foul. Saran, a deep two. That was pretty. He's just a freshman. Uh, you're guarding him. You've got to stay attached to his hip. You can't leave him. He'll get up over you, and he'll score it. Tremendous shooter. He's a 51% shooter. Eighth best mark in the Big West. Played his high school ball in Western North Carolina before coming out here. Belich, a three. Rebounded by Saran. Chance to potentially get up by double digits. Saran kicked to the corner. Corner, a three. Well, that ball went from one corner to the other, Steve. That's a recipe for success. Hard to play defense when you the ball's moving faster than you are. Irvine with an 11-point advantage. It's their biggest of the night. Mitchell runs into a double team. The Prudo with the screen now gets it back from Mitchell with a left hand. Can't get it to go. This is normally a very good shooting team in Santa Barbara. They were third in the nation starting last week at 50 and a half percent for the field. Oh, and he's fouled and a chance on a four-point play. <laughs> that they're out of the picture. They're not out of the picture. They've got a good basketball team. The problem is St. Mary's has been really on top of their mark, yeah. but uh, really good basketball on the West Coast here, and obviously... Uh, some some teams in the Pac-12 making their mark now is, in, in terms of uh, positioning Arizona top seed and see if Josh Pastor can stay neutral in the studio. <laughs> uh, see if, if he can yeah. do that. I don't think he will. I've coached against Josh. He's going to have a tough time fooling me on that. We go back a long way. Wait until, yeah, yeah. Wait until I throw to him at halftime. He's going to be like, well, wait a minute, Mr. Chris. Well, he's, he's going to, you know, he can't, he's not going to be able to control his <laughs> bias to, to Arizona, but... Uh, did the first ever story on him when he wanted to be a coach for Lute Olsen. Yeah, then it had a, he's had a tremendous career. Hone completed the four-point play, so he leads all scores with 13. Here's Mitchell. Mitchell misfires again. One of four in the first half. 
is in foul trouble, got two fouls in the first 90 seconds, and Santa Barbara hasn't been the same since. Well, what's happened is that everybody's gotten a chance to rebound and go. They dominate, have dominated the glass this game. Absolutely double up Santa Barbara on the glass. Here's Carter Welling. Triori picks him up. Crockrell looking to get others involved. That's what he does best. Here's Tillis on Bland. Splits the double team and missed. Got some tough defense yep. from the Gauchos coming out of that timeout. They really, really dialed in on the defensive end. Here's Mitchell. Traore, free throw line jumper, misfires. Then miss from out there too much. He's five of nine. He's the leading scorer with a dozen for the Gauchos in the first half. Crock Reldaway cutting Saran, and he's fouled on the baseline drive. Well, you can see that UC Irvine, Steve, wants to get out in transition. If if the Gauchos aren't hitting shots, they're going to take their defensive rebounds. They're a tremendous defensive rebounding team, and they're going to push the ball. you got opportunities when you can rebound like they can to get numbers in the break, and they're doing that. Darren Saran at the free throw line here. Tip off your weekend with our next NBA Friday doubleheader. Donovan Mitchell and the Cavs are now the two seed in the East. They host Tyrese Maxey and the Sixers, 7.30 Eastern. Then Giannis in the Bucks play the second game of a three-game road trip against Anthony Edwards and the Timberwolves, who lead the Western Conference, one of the top teams out West. Our coverage tips with NBA Countdown at 7 on ESPN and the app. You're the Gauchos now. You've got to try to come down and get a couple of scores, a couple of stops. See if you can get this down to single digits or right around 9 or 10. Trailing by 17. Mitchell leaves it there. Traore, and he's going to get hammered by Dean Keeler. And so free throws are coming here. Maybe this will kickstart A.J. Mitchell's game offensively. Well, you see what he what he's, he can do, Steve. He, you know, it's not just about scoring with A.J. Mitchell. He gets the rim as well as anybody. He slashes. And then he just finds his teammates. And, and so even if he's not scoring, he's getting his teammates free throws. Uh, you're getting in, into the bonus. He does so many things for this uh, Gaucho squad. Traore at the line here. And he is three for five from the free throw line in his first half. And A.J. Mitchell will take a seat on the bench. Smart sub. NBA prospect. We can dive deeper into that in the second half, but with 120 to go, he's got two fouls. No, that's a smart move. You do not want to take a chance. But how about Johan uh, Traore, who, who really is just a sophomore? And what he's done, I mean, his future is very bright. Yeah. You can see how, how, how they value his play. Underutilized at Auburn, he scored two points, averaged one rebound, and so in the early going, they had to develop him here at Santa Barbara, and they've done a good job. Henry... Missed off back iron. Gauchos need a run. Just inside of a minute to go. Pierre Louis rolling off that right there was Caputo. A turnover. Crockrell ahead to Henry. Henry's open on the baseline. Well, again, transition basketball. You get numbers because of the turnover. They come down, they find ways to score, get open looks. Shooting 43% of this first half. Back to a 17-point lead. Fontenet misses. Bellich tried to get the rebound, and Tillis will secure it. It's a 13-0 run right now for Irvine. And the use-it-or-lose-it timeout by Russell Turner. Well, it's been a run for Irvine. They've done a great job. They, this was a tight game. Steve yeah. Times. Maybe four to six points down. Uh, figure this is closer to 20. Well, you know, when and you look at this crowd behind us, it's been tremendous. Uh, they've been a factor. Yeah. And, of course, they're, they like cheering on their squad. They're undefeated. Why not? Yeah, it's a 19-win team overall that won at USC, lost by a point at San Diego State. I'm not sure the Aztecs would want to play them again. That was down at Viejas Arena. Well, they beat Toledo, who's a very good team yeah. in the MAC. So they've had some wins. Played at Utah State, played at New Mexico. Brock Rell missed and on the offensive rebound attempt Carter Welling and there's going to be a foul called well that's so difficult to do Steve is when you're stopping penetration it's not that you can't stop the person that's penetrating but you put two guys on on the penetrating guard whether it's Mitchell for 
uh, the Gauchos or it's Crack, crack Rail for uh, Irvine, you've got to get in there now and you got to you got to crack down. They call it cracking down and just take their, the, the, the rolling big guys and you've got to keep them off the glass. Easier said than done, but uh, that's really been a, been a thorn for the Gauchos, just keeping these team off the glass. That was the 19th foul. It was a one and one. Mitchell's back in. It'll count if it goes, and it is short. And what a first half for the UC Irvine Anteaters as they try and stay on top of the Big West Conference here. Late in the month of summary, Joe Pasternak was on your staff at Cal for seven, eight years, something like that. What do you think Joe said to his team in the locker room? Well, I don't today? think anything. I know. I, yeah. know, I, I think I, I, I know what he said and, and see what he what he what harps upon is look we got to rebound better we're getting doubled on the glass yeah. let's, let's stop them in transition but we've got to really secure the basketball no turnovers that lead to baskets i don't think i've seen a team get only nine rebounds and not a single offensive rebound over the first 20 minutes in a while henry off the curl that's a good start for the anteaters well, and you got to start, you know, you talk about what does a coach talk about, Joe Pasternak. I know he's been a defensive coach all these years. This is the biggest challenge he's had with his team this year is getting them to defend, especially in transition and then in the half court. Here's Mitchell. He turns the corner on Crockrell the second and has got a quick bucket here in the opening 40 seconds. Well, Santa Barbara can score. You know, we talked about 50% from the floor, one of the tops in the country, but they've got to defend. That's where they've got to make their mark and turn their fortunes around yeah. on the defensive end of the floor. After a week which they split games last week, they dropped down to 49.5% as a team on the year. That's 10th in the NCAA. They shot 40% in the first half. Crockrell, he had five assists in the first half. Tillis and Belich with some contact there for an early foul to open up the proceedings here in the second 20. Well, you see how much of a problem Crockrell is for opponents because when he gets into the paint he's, he's a guy that thinks pass first he he can score but that's not his forte he really wants to make other players better get them involved third on belic the sophomore from serbia here's henry who averages 10 points a game having a big senior season steps through that defense and took an extra step that's the second time they've called him for a travel well, you called it. He said he stepped through that one, but you're allowed yeah. the Euro Extra step. step through that one, yeah. <clears throat> I'm still trying to figure out the Euro step because I still think there's a travel in there somewhere. Well, I do too. But, but you know, you, they get you those long, slow, deliberate steps, and it's pretty handy if you know how to do it. Irvine ended the first half on a 13-2 run. 17 points, their biggest advantage. Santa Barbara trying to avoid going 7-9 and nine in conference play. They're in a three-way tie for sixth place and a turnover. That's not going to help. Crockrell open on the wing is Hone missed back iron and an offensive rebound and inside Hone underneath Loisetan and count it oh the big dogs the big trees whatever you want to call them they're having a night well, here's the pass, and you know, this all stemmed from the offensive rebounds. It's really a, a, a multiple times this has happened to the Gauchos. They've gone up, and, and obviously they gave up a second shot by not securing the defensive rebound. And I, I, I want to say this again, you've got to go up with two. You can't go up with one. I think when you're tipping the ball, disaster happens, and they're now paying the price. First time around when they met earlier this month, and Irvine won by 15 on the road at the Thunderdog. Gauchos allowed 44 points in the paint, and already 24 points in the paint for Irvine of their 51. And we're approaching two minutes gone by here in this second half. Mitchell needs a big second half. And he finds his shot there. Tried to lean into it. Well, that's what Irvine wants to do against Mitchell. Make him beat you. Oh, man! Oh, he got Josh Pierre-Louis on ice skates. How well has he played today for his team? I mean, he's given them some huge baskets, some really tough acrobatic shots as well. Here's Mitchell again, and that got blocked by Loisington. Remember, we were at the shoot-around today. They said if he goes down there, block that. Well, watch this. Watch the transition here, the step. He's got a, he's got a player, goes to his left hand, floats in the air. I mean, he's just done it all for his team, and that's a difficult 
move to guard and transition. Uh, uh, Justin Holmes been on fire. Well, they wind up calling a foul on Loishikin. He's third rather than the block. But Irvine was told in the post when Mitchell goes down there, he's normally going to his left hand and swing and try and block that thing. And instead, Mitchell is at the line here. Now, how important are seniors today, Steve? You, you show me a team with seniors that are playing some of the best basketball in their career. They're veteran players. They know how to play. They know they know timing, their extension of their coaching staff. So if you can get seniors on your team, good things can happen. A.J. Mitchell, a junior, but an awfully good one. NBA prospect. We'll see whether or not he declares. He's from Belgium, a junior on the Lou Henson watch list. Well, he's got to get healthy first. Yeah. All sorts of projections. I've seen him projected as high as the 30th overall pick by the Athletic. Good size for the point guard. Crockrell leaves it inside for Carter Welling. Came up short. Fontanet, and now a chance at a transition bucket here for the Gauchos. Gauchos fifth in the conference at 76 points per game, and Mitchell came up short again. He's going to be two for seven, and we've got a whistle and a foul in the backcourt there. Well, A.J. Mitchell had a chance. That I think he was trying to draw the foul, and, and surprised he didn't go to his offhand. He likes to come back to his left, but he had a chance to draw a foul. Very difficult to keep these players out of the paint. Hardest thing to do in basketball, Steve, is guard the basketball one-on-one. -on -one. It it's an impossible task. You must get help. You must angle players, make them go with their offhand. Russ yep. Turner talked to me before the game, was visiting with him in the coach's locker room, and he made an interesting point. He says so much of what we do is off of uh, really of, of not so much technical. It's it's really scouting and, and going against tendencies. We try to study tendencies and try to take players away from the, what they want to do, make them do something they don't want to do. Third out to be a non-shooting foul, and that's going to be a foul on uh, Devin Tillis as he tried to guard Bland in the low block. Yeah, I think so many times you talk about teams, Steve, that that try to to try to stop plays, whether you know stop tendencies, try to take away the other opponent's strengths, and if you can do that, you're really making making putting pressure on your opponents. Ariel Bland at the free throw line, six seven junior, Eden Prairie, Minnesota, six and a half points. Well, I like his game too. He's 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 yeah. exploded a number of times. This year for the Gauchos, and uh, he's a good-looking junior for sure. 65% shooter, but he hasn't put up enough shots to qualify for the Big West Conference lead. That would be the lead over Bernardo De Silva, who has it now for Hawaii. Henry, and he's going to get bumped by the freshman Fontenet the second. It's going to be the second on Jason Fontenet, the second. Pressed into early foul duty, early playing duty, rather, off the bench for the Gauchos when there was two quick fouls picked up in the first 90 seconds well, by A.J. Mitchell. And he's a capable player. He's also yeah. gone for some big games this year for his team. Dean Keeler in. He put the headband back on. Thank you. Crockerell trying to find a shot. Five to shoot. Tillis puts it on the floor, getting swiped at, going to work, spinning on Bland with a left hand, and count it with one to go on the shot clock. Devin Tillis, Steve, shows you his ability to shake off one, two defenders, split, three defenders, a fourth, and he gets to the rim with his offhand. Unbelievable. He went by four guys in that play. One, one person. And Johan Traore and Matia Belich will come in. Bland is going to sit down along with Evans Caprudo. He just seemed to have that ball on a rope. The ball was dangling, and nobody had to get a piece of it, but he had it, he had it under control. And his reward is three-point play. <laughs> Tillis with seven. He's also got five rebounds and a couple of steals. Well, that's the time you're going to take somebody out. Give him a break. He deserves it. Santa Barbara sitting here on 34 points a week ago tonight. They were down at San Diego at UC San Diego. They were held to a season low 46 points in a loss there. Their previous low had been 61. 
So a couple of Thursdays back to back on the road have not been very productive for the Gauchos so far, but still 16 minutes to go. Anderson underneath, Fontenet dribbles and finds a shot over a very good defender in uh, Yuja Dujele. Well, that's a good play by Cole Anderson finding his teammate, but that's what Fontenet can do. He's got that great mid-range. They've got some capable players here, but it's been the Irvines and Aders that have made it very tough for the Gauchos tonight. Back to a 20-point deficit for the Gauchos. Crockerell the second missed. Mitchell with a rebound. Good rebounding guard. And Fontenet! Yeah, I like Jason Fontenet. That's now two in a row that he's hit yeah. tough transition baskets. The June, the, you know, he's a freshman. He's only a freshman from Phoenix. His his future is very bright as well. Henry, step back jumper. Yeah, I don't want to put a lot of pressure on Fontenet, but he looks a lot like A.J. Mitchell looked when he was a freshman in Isla Vista. Yeah, he's a freshman. That's, that's pretty good. Fontenet. Treori, who had a nice first half. And on the pick and roll, Treori, and he's fouled. That's Dean Keeler who got him. Well, we got some Champ Week excitement coming up. March is just a few days away. Buys, as we talked about, and, yeah. and so the top four teams, you know, you're, you're going to get buys. That's what you want in postseason. You want to play as few, as few games as possible yeah. to get to the NCAA tournament. And we talked about this mid-majors that really literally have to win their tournament. I, I've been in those shoes, yeah. uh, Steve. You, you, you've got to, you know, it doesn't matter how well you've done. You've got to perform during the tournament. Well, seeds one and two get a double bye into the March 15th semifinals. Seeds three and four get the single bye into the quarterfinals on the 14th. And day one is March 13th. You'll have five versus eight. You'll have six versus seven. Again, you see San Diego won't be there. Neither will Cal Poly. And it's tracking like either Fullerton or Bakersfield will be that third and final team out. But still, most teams have five games remaining as we have two and a half weeks to go in the Big West's regular season. Serrano had a big first half high off the window. He's a freshman from Turkey. He had 10 in the first half. Fontenet a three and looked good going out of his hands and it's down. Maybe a spark Santa Barbara badly needs. Well, there's a freshman we've been giving praise to for, for good reason. He's skilled. He's got some ability. Irvine has grown cold the last couple of minutes. Scoreless. Santa Barbara stepping up the defense here, 10 to shoot. It's a 10-0 run for Santa Barbara to get within 13. Crockwell and missed it, and right there was Yuja Dujele who had a chance at a second chance points and missed it. Oh, Mitchell almost lost that one out of bounds. Much better shooting second half for the Gauchos. Can they make a run? Fontanet. Mitchell gets the screen. Treori goes to his favorite spot on the floor. Pierre Louis has been quiet and is going to turn it over on a bounce pass. But he's got to shoot that basketball. He was in perfect position, middle of the paint. A little too unselfish. Turnovers have not been a problem for either team. I think they're sitting here manageable with uh, Santa Barbara having eight now. Irvine with seven. Ben Stolzberg, the Creighton transfer, will come in. Well, he's finally getting a little healthy. He's been injured as well. The injury bug has definitely plagued Santa Barbara. But, you know, it's unfortunate turnover. They hit that shot. Maybe they cut it to single digits or at least a 10-point lead. Anything can happen from there. And there's A.J. Yeah. Mitchell out in the passing lanes. They're definitely picking it up defensively. Both these teams are very good three-point shooting teams as well, but they haven't really put too many up yet. Santa Barbara's made four, three for Irvine. They've relied a lot on points in the paint here, and that's going to be a turnover against UC Irvine. I like the defense that that Santa Barbara's playing. They're really being active with their hands, and you can see multiple players in there. Uh, oh, wow. The ball. That was really active with your hands and your arms and your elbows. Well, you know, Steve, what I used to say is the ball's your hands part of the ball. They don't let that go on the road that call too often. Well, both teams are physical. Let's make yeah. no mistake about that. Mitchell again turns the corner. There's some physicality, and he's going to pick up a foul here. And that's what A.J. Mitchell does. He turns the corner, 
it's hard when he plays downhill to get another body in front of him. And if you do, he's so adept at finding his teammates. Just in a, really an impossible cover one-on-one. -on -one. You've got him with multiple defenders on him at all times. All right, he's a junior. He's still got a year to go. Projected as the 30th pick in the Athletics' recent mock NBA draft. And it has been a while since anybody in the Big West Conference has been drafted by an NBA team. You're talking 11 years now. You know who the last guy to go was? Actually, I do. Tell me. <laughs> I think it was Carlo. Uh, 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 let me see. Uh, he went to Long Beach State. James oh. Ennis III. He was a beast. Oh, I was thinking of the Pacific. Again, not the well, he's the last first rounder. Michael yeah. Oluwakandi in 98. Yeah. That's who I was thinking. Yeah. So if AJ Mitchell goes in the first round, that would break a drought going back to 1998. Uh, I'm not, you're better at this trivia than I am. I, well, I covered that draft, yeah, so I'll never pretty, forget it. That's pretty good. Here's Carter Welling inside, and Evans Caputo made it a tough take. That's some good defense by the Gauchos. They they can get some scores, and they'll make some things very interesting. Yeah. Down a dozen. Mitchell for three. It's good. Oh, wow. It's a nine-point game. Here come the Gauchos. Well, and Russell Turner wants his players to play through. A lot of coaches would call timeout. He's trusting his team here. Mitchell has ten. Saran. He finds a shot. And, wow, that was a tough shot right there off the window. He's been tough off the glass this game. Saran's got a dozen on 4-7 shooting. Back up to a double-digit lead of 11. Mitchell trying to take over. Fontanet misfires. We've seen some games A.J. Mitchell take over in the second half. Go all Kelly Leak, Bad News Bears. And Saran is just determined to get to the free throw line here. Well, if there's one guy who's going to will his team back to victory, it's A.J. Mitchell, the reigning Big West Conference against teams and defenses that are designed to stop yeah. him. So uh, when he can go for that, uh, those amounts, he, and like you say, Steve, he does it always in bunches. He's had huge second halves for his team. Surratt at the line for a couple coming out of the break. When you think about Santa Barbara guards, there are guys in the Big West that are playing now. Gabe Vincent comes to mind, right, but he wasn't drafted. And Jory uh, McLaughlin uh, that played there, that it, it, it yeah. played some in the NBA as well. But, uh, so, you know, it's interesting. Uh, this game has been interesting second half now. The Gauchos uh, are doing a better job defensively. The Anteaters went for 10 first half assists, only have one assist the second yeah. half. So that's a result of of, of Irvine, of, of uh, Santa Barbara's yeah, making adjustments. Yeah, yeah Clark Rell doesn't have an assist, and he had five pretty no. quickly. No, they Mid made, yeah, they made an adjustment yeah. to guard him. Couple. Mitchell's from Belgium. His dad was a professional there in Europe, and Josh Pierre Louis getting in on the fun points four and five for the senior. Well, he's been quiet, but that again has something to do with Irvine. They they put a lot of their game plan yes. into stopping him. Yep, there was a point of emphasis at the shoot around not to let number one beat you, and he averages. 11 points, five boards again. That got blocked, it looked like, by Traore from behind. Dylan Thorner, a grad student, had the rebound. And we've got a whistle, and the shot clock stopped. Stopped at 18. Thinking back, we had that one Santa Barbara Davis game, you and I, that had nine official reviews. Yeah, how about that <laughs> we, one? We I, haven't had one. Where were those when I needed them? I, I yeah. wish I, I would have liked a couple. You know, it's interesting how many loose balls, block shots. Uh, you know, Santa Barbara just hasn't been able to yeah. secure those loose balls, and it seems like Irvine's getting almost all of them. That was a deflection. I didn't think the uh, pass. Stolzberg, yeah. I didn't think the pass was that errant. They oh. put the shot clock back up to 26. Now it's down to 20. It's funny, I used to ask officials that there was when my players would throw it over the gym. No, it was deflected. It was deflected, and some of them so bad that they gave us the deflection. <laughs> <laughs> Cohen drives baseline, and a foul will be called. And they're going to get a blocking foul underneath, and it's going against Josh Pierre Louis. Well, if you're Russ Turner, you're not comfortable with this lead. It's a 10 point, 11 point lead. And you know with A.J. Mitchell out here and Josh Pierre-Louis picking things up and Traore already having a great basketball game, you don't want to give them an opportunity to yep. make a run the second half. 
And they probably already got word that UC San Diego took care of business at Riverside tonight in the conference. And so now for the time being, UC San Diego has tied Irvine in the win column. The difference is the loss column, and the two teams are set for a 1 o'clock showdown down in San Diego on Saturday for first place in the conference. And it's funny you mention that. I, When I coached Steve, I didn't want anybody giving our players any other scores during the game. But, you know, sometimes that can be a motive for you, too. Yep. It's just you got to know your team. If that's a motive that helps your team focus in, great. But, you know, you just want your team really concentrating on this game, not worrying about what other teams are doing. But, you know, sometimes those things can be motivating. It just depends on how in your, you got to know your team, know what they can what they can handle. So Irvine needs to win to stay a game ahead of UC San Diego, who they already beat earlier this season in this building. But as we showed you on a graphic earlier, Irvine's a different team on the road and scoring almost 20 points a game less away from the friendly confines of the Bren Center. Mitchell in the key missed it. But finally, an offensive rebound. That's the first of the night for the Gauchos. He comes almost halfway home in the second half. Traore missed. Transition here for Irvine. They were really good in the first half in transition. Well, they're still putting pressure on the Gauchos right now. Deep three by Hone. Traore with a rebound. Traore didn't have a rebound in the first half, if you can believe that. He averages 14 points, five and a half boards a game. 13 point game under 10 to go. And they're a foul. Yuji Dujeli. And here's the up to the minute Big West Conference standings. Showdown Saturday at 1 inside Lion Tree Arena in San Diego. Yeah, that's been a really an interesting story, not only in the league, but in college basketball. UC San Diego had a tremendous run. Uh, and UC Davis, you know, don't go to sleep on UC Davis and Jim Les, what he's done. They arguably, they may have the player of the year in, 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 uh, in Pepper. And, yeah. and and he's a tremendous, Elijah Pepper, if you haven't seen him play, tremendous player who's had huge games this year. So any of those teams capable at the top. And as we've got a reach in foul here away from the ball, one of the things we talked about was Irvine, right, losing D.J. Davis to Butler in the portal, Dawson Baker to BYU in the portal. They were both averaging 15 points a game. For UC San Diego, Eric Olin's team lost three guys in the portal and then picked up three Division II guys who have almost been better. Fourth on Bent Loishatin. Yeah, you know, I think any time, this is really a great point, Steve, you you know, if you focus on what you don't have, you're going to get yourself in trouble. You, you, negativity comes in. You know, players don't care who leaves. I can, right, tell you, yeah. I can tell you that. They just want opportunities, and it's amazing how many players, given an opportunity, step up for you. So, uh, you know, turn that into a positive. Uh, everybody loses players. Uh, hopefully you don't lose two or three years' top players every year. But when you lose somebody, it's, it just opens up the door for somebody else. This is Cole Anderson. He leads the Big West Conference in three-point shooting at 39.5%. He's made 62 triples on the year and calmly knocks down a couple of free throws there. He's got five points. Well, he shoots the ball so well from the line, too. You'd like to see him get there more. Uh, I mean, 93%. He doesn't get much better than that, but he doesn't get there often. Henry. Crockerell the second. Stuck on five assists for a while. They shut him down. A kid who had a 16 assist game against Bakersfield earlier this season. He drives here. Fontenet on him. And he got just enough space to score that one. And you don't think he's going to score. He's the smallest player on the floor. And what does he do? He gets a shot up over the top of you and scores. He finds way to get the job done. Lead back up to 13. Pierre Louis kicks it to the corner. Stolzberg, A.J. Mitchell on the bench, and the Creighton transfer with some penetration, a good take, and he's going to get free throws out of it. Well, I really like the aggressiveness now. It's Santa Barbara is really finding their niche by driving it, and they can they can really shoot the three, so there are threats to drive if they're going to close out, as UC Irvine's doing. Santa Barbara's taking advantage of that by getting good drives. We have five college basketball games Saturday on ESPN and the app. They start at noon Eastern. We're highlighting these three games. 
Two top teams in the ACC square off at four. Eastern number 10 at North Carolina host Virginia. Then it's Texas and number nine Kansas at eight Eastern. Two SEC teams get after it. Number five Tennessee hosting Texas A&M. Should be another great day of college hoops. Well, I can't wait. I had the pleasure of covering that game, North Carolina and Virginia last year. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm telling you, uh, it, it's just, it, there's so many good games on Saturdays. Uh, I can't wait. I, yep. You know, whether I'm working a game or not, I'm cover, I'm watching games like you are, I know. Well, we talked about the portal and Dalton Connect, if you haven't seen it for Tennessee. I was doing oh, some goodness. big sky basketball last year. It was just killing it at Northern Colorado and he's He's a guy that was on the wooden watch, the top 20. Now he's special. Yep. Brock Rell, the second, misfired. Done a nice job, has Santa Barbara getting Irvine off the offensive glass in the latter part of this game. Schulzberg. Anderson, that's a two, and it's good. Now Irvine's, you know, they're, they're a tough defensive team, but it's the... Gauchos have really, really dug in here. They've played with a lot of tenacity the second half. Showing you what they're capable of. Again, this is yep. a team that beat Irvine last year on their home floor. Carter Welling. Brother plays on the team. He's a freshman. Great for Utah, but an older kid that went on a two-year mission, and he's going to get fouled. And that's going to take us to a break. 7.51 to go in regulation. Ten-point lead for UC Irvine as they... Try and stay on here. Santa Barbara has turned the tables in the second half on UC Irvine. Irvine's only shooting 35% in the second half after a blistering 60% from the floor in the first half. Well, we've pointed to assists, Steve, and when you only you get 10 assists in the first half, but you get one in the second half, they're not finding easy shots as they did in the second half. They got it in transition, and they got it from Pierre Crockrell, who, who's able to get his teammates some easy looks. And for Santa Barbara, shooting 58% in the second half, while shooting 40% in the first half. And so it is a 12-point game inside of eight minutes to go. Well, and they're playing uh, A.J. Mitchell off the ball now. Very interesting to see if he can get going, maybe get a live ball catch and attack off a live ball catch rather than off the dribble. Irvine's defense has been stifling this year, leading the Big West in scoring defense, only allowing 66 and a half points per game. They've held seven Big West opponents to 65 or fewer points. Henry, a big three, leaving the door open here as Mitchell gets the rebound. Anderson has already made one in this game, and Keeler with a rebound, a tie-up, and they're going to say foul instead of a tie-up. Possession arrow was... Pointing toward Irvine. Well, that's interesting. I thought he did tie him up, but I think there might have been a foul earlier, and I'm not sure if that was just a delayed call. But that's going to be the fourth on Dean Keeler, 6'11 senior. Averages six points, five boards a game. Does his best work with rim protection. Again, the five spot for Irvine between three guys. Loishiton, Carter Welling, Dean Keeler. 21 points a game, 13 rebounds. Three and a half blocks, pretty consistent. Well, the, the Gauchos are fouling now, and if you're if you're going to play the Irvine Anteaters, and of course I jinxed it up there, they've been shooting at a really high rate uh, for free throws. They're, again, 76%, one of the tops in the country. All right, let's see if Irvine has a run, and this time last year, right this weekend at the end of February, they won seven in a row to get hot. Included in that was the championship of the conference tournament. Bland tried to tip in the missed shot by Traore. Got just their second offensive rebound of the game. Second chance points, 10-0 in favor of Irvine. Traore rarely misses from that spot on the floor. Yeah, good look by the uh, 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 Gauchos. Crockerell. <laughs> and more points in the paint. He says, you know what? It's my turn to step up and close this door a little bit. Big needed basket. Well, they have 32 points in the paint. Mitchell, and Mitchell turns it over. Here's Crockerell. Little Euro step there and got it blocked by Bland. Come back the other way. Bland to Anderson who drives in. And Henry, that is going to be basket interference. That was quite the sequence right there. It will be 68-56. Uh, you can see there's the break. Watch Cockrell, how he just keeps his head up, 
He reads the defense, the defense retreats, and he just gets up there, and then you see Cole Anderson running the floor, getting credit for the two. You know, you, you get the feeling that the Gauchos are within striking distance, but they've got to get some stops, and they've gotten them this half. Full court pressure. See if Santa Barbara can get back into it here. Well, Irvine held the Gauchos to 61 in their previous meeting earlier this month. Hone, and there's going to be a foul called on the drive. They're going to get Josh Pierre-Louis. Nine team fouls now for Irvine. Right at the six-minute mark. Much more manageable deficit than ten minutes ago when... The Gauchos were down 22 points at 56-34. Well, they found a formula to this half. If they can match this, and I'm not sure what's going on with the Ir Irvine at the line. They've been so good all year long. They have not converted the last couple of possessions. Yeah. Fontenet leaves it inside. Treori with a bucket. Well, there's there's an automatic two if he gets the ball and gets it squared, gets his shoulders squared to the rim, Steve. That's, you can count that or he'll draw a foul. Irvine. Needs a bucket. Gauchos need another stop. As close as the Gauchos have been here in the second half was nine after a made three by Mitchell not too long ago. Saran, little crossover in the paint, lets it fly and balance the rebound. Down it goes to Treori. One on one against Keeler. Spins on it with a reverse, and Keeler thought he had the block. Instead, they're going to call it a foul, and that is going to be another foul on Keeler, which will be his third. Uh, Russell Turner is saying, Look, you know, if you're going to call that a foul, let's let the officials who are right in front of the play call it. I think the official furthest away made that call, and Russell Turner let. Let them know that. Veteran officials here, but, yeah. you know, if you're a coach, you, you want to make that point. Let, listen, uh, two other guys decided not to call it, so. It was a great move, but it was just, uh, you know, maybe even a better defensive move uh, there. And how about the Gaucho just quietly getting back in this game? Yeah. They could cut this to a three-possession game. And as, as you mentioned, Steve, they were out. They were down and out, but they, there's no quit. Again, this is a team that beat... Irvine uh, last year, not, not something that teams do. They were the defending champs, tournament team, so uh, they're showing some fight this half. A really good sign if, if you're a, a Gaucho, you see Santa Barbara fan. Close as they've been since the first half. They might have to change it from UC Santa Barbara Gauchos to the UC Santa Barbara Chippers. <laughs> the way they're chipping away. What was a 22-point deficit? And Fontenet's going to get called for a foul right in front of us. Well, the fouling formula has worked so far because they've been able to kind of change two for one or three for two. And and they're going to make Irvine, you know, knock some shots down. But I think there's enough time in the game. You don't really need to foul. There's five minutes left, and you're down like th three possessions. You might want to just play your defense, see if you can turn them over and, and get a missed shot. Again, Irvine has not lost at home this season. They are 10-0 overall. 7-0 at home in Big West Conference play, and they've held seven Big West Conference opponents to 65 points or less. I'm not sure they'll hold Santa Barbara under this. Irvine leads the Big West Conference from the free throw line at 76%. Saran with the two big makes there. Well, you've got a good fan support here. Uh, they've come out. I mentioned this earlier, Steve. They were there early in this game. I mean, before the game started, they were here in droves. Fontenet misfired, rebounded, and then nearly stolen. Fontenet almost had a chance to, with a takeaway. Here's Hone playing with 17 points. And Fontenet gets the steal on the other end. Ahead to Stolzberg. And he nearly lost it. Coming up on four and a half to go. They get it into number 13, Sands. Second leading score in the conference at almost 20 a game. Mitchell goes to work. Drives with the left hand. Misses, but cleaning it up is Johan Traore. And again, you get Mitchell to the basket. Recipe for offensive rebounds because he's going to draw a crowd. 
It's an eight-point deficit. Hone against Mitchell, screen high, Welling. Saran gets a screen from Yuji Dujele. Henry, Henry, a little body bump and count it! Oh, what a big time play! Huge basket because the Gauchos were really making a surge defensively, but how about when they roomed together on the road? I heard that back in December. Here's Andre Henry trying to complete the three-point play. He's having his best year scoring. Only averaged three and a half points per game last year. Averages ten points this season. And again, with DJ Davis and Dawson Baker going into the portal and Crock Rell not really caring who he gives it up to, right? Last year he gave it up to Davis and Baker. And now this year he says, I'll just give it up to Hone and Henry and they can have career years. And that's what they're doing. Back to an 11 point advantage. And we got a foul. And Pierre Louis got knocked to the ground. And it's going to be on Andre Henry. Well, that was a well designed play there. And you can see again how much of a problem A.J. Mitchell is because he drives the baseline and, and he's going to get coverage, either single, double, or maybe triple coverage, and that's going to leave some guys open. Santa Barbara 75% from the line tonight. That's a big miss right there. Uh, they're going to substitute defense here for offense as Cole Anderson takes a seat. They're going to try to come with some full court pressure with yeah. just a little under four minutes to play. Wow, two big misses and then a rebound by Henry. And a whistle. And it's going to be Irvine basketball. Last touch by the Gauchos. Well, those, wow. are, those are two big misses because, again, he hits those shots. And it's, again, single digits, triple, or, or, or it's a, a three-possession game. Here's the pressure. Irvine breaks it. They were working on it at the shoot-around today, anticipating it was coming. Coming up on three and a half to go. And they're trying to keep the ball out of Pierre Cockrell's hands. They're denying him all over the court. Irvine looking for a 20th win on the season and a steal. That was a good substitution. Bland came in. Fontanet, a big three, no. And a rebound by Loisheton. Well, that would have cut it. Yep. They've missed some big opportunities here with the free throws in the missed three right there. And Henry says, calm down. Irvine trying to pick up a 13th Big West win. Going to a first place showdown with UC San Diego in a game lead Saturday at 1 down in San Diego. Hone just jacks up a 3 with 1 to go on the shot clock and missed it. But they used some valuable time there. Mitchell, Traore with the 22. Sets the screen now. Good job by Crockrell, the second. But still, Mitchell is able to score on the baseline. Well, good score and a timeout. That's a great uh, opportunity here. We're going to talk about it. The couch shows mounting a comeback. What they did in the first half, they shot 60%. They're only shooting 34%. So their shots aren't falling, but they've only had one assist this half. That's amazing when they had 10 in the first half. So you're saying, look, let's take care of the basketball. We cannot foul. Don't stop the clock. This uh, you know, if, if they hit a shot, okay, but the clock's your friend. It's You see Santa Barbara's enemy, and you can see now that Santa Barbara's going to want to stretch this game out. So make your free throws and, and then come back and take care of the basketball. It's just imperative that you do that, because if you do, you can salt this game away. But it's not over, Steve. There's ten minutes. There's, there's a ten-point, nine-point lead with really two and a half to play. Yeah. Plenty of time. But one of your bigs who you rely on for rebounding and good defense is just fouled out. Ariel Bland is done. He'll foul out with three points. Well, I have a feeling there's going to be some guard play that's going to decide this play, this this game down the stretch. But you've got to make your free throws for starters, and then you just you you know you want to let some time go off. You you don't want to come down here and and, and you know make make uh, Santa Barbara maybe pick up a little bit, make Santa Barbara take a little bit of time. 
But if they hit a shot, don't foul, don't stop the clock. Back up to an 11-point advantage. What a night Justin Hone has had with 19 points. Averages 13, leading score for the Anteaters. Fontanet, that's a sweet move, but he can't finish. Coming up on two minutes to go. You see San Diego's already won tonight. Put a little pressure in the Big West standings. Big showdown. If Irvine can close it, well, even if they don't win this thing, it'll still be a big showdown Saturday in America's finest city. Crockerelli turned it over. Boy, he had five assists just like that. They haven't allowed him to have an assist in about the last 29 minutes or so. It's been amazing. And there's a big block, Loisetin. And that is going to be Santa Barbara basketball. They're going to retain possession. Oh, you can see how hard it is to get all the way to the rim. You've got multiple defenders, and you got the seven-footer at the rim saying, give me that. Believe it or not, it's just the second block of the night for Irvine. Well, but the threat is there, yeah. Steve. You, you know he's there. Here's Mitchell, and Mitchell scores in the lane over at Crockrell. 90 seconds to go. 75-64. There's that pressure again. Well, now you got to take one. You just don't want to let this time go out. I think go out here. Now what do you do? 15 to go. You almost got to play out the possession. Well, now, now you huh? do. Yeah, yeah, either you get it early, but don't foul this late on the clock. Eight to go on the shot clock. Henry guarded up high by Treori. Henry for the knockout punch. Mitchell with a rebound. Inside of a minute to go. Can get it to a two-possession game here with a three. Santa Barber's made five threes tonight. Mitchell attempts the three, and it's good. Timeout, Santa Barbara. 46.2. Don't go anywhere. It's a two-possession game. Mitchell and his resume for the night. Well, these games used to drive me crazy, Steve, because you think that your team's got this in the bag, and they don't. Because, number one, the other team is not quitting. Santa Barbara, to their credit, they've come back and fight, and they they're, have championship pedigree. But you've got to put teams away. They're not going to get there. There's a deep break, and Rockrell gets it to Loishatin, who's fouled quickly by Traore. Well, that's a smart play. You know, if you're Cockrell, could you take it up? Yeah, but if you don't make the basket, now you've got Santa Barbara coming the other way, so yeah. he gets rid of it. Uh, really a smart play. And now, again, go to the line. You've got an opportunity to put the game away by making free throws. And you're in the double bonus. Again, Irvine, the top team from the free throw line, 76% through 26 games. It's number one in the Big West. But you got a big here in Loishatin. Calmly strokes the first one. No jinx. Well, this is winning time. You know, if you're a player and you have a chance to salt the game, well, you, you got to love to be at the line. If, it's like being a shortstop in baseball. If you're saying, oh, please don't hit the ball to me, yeah, yeah. you don't want to be on the <laughs> exactly. floor. You want the ball to go in to you, and you want to go to the free throw line if you're a winner. Two big makes by the seven foot one inch junior center from Germany. Mitchell. Pierre Louis at three, no good, and Henry the rebound, and that just might do it. Well, va valiant effort here by the Gauchos. I think they're going to be able to take something in this game, but I think Russell Turner and his staff are going to take something as well. They they just played an outstanding first half, kind of held on a little bit the second half, but you know, sometimes you got to give credit to your opponents, yeah. and when they go back and look at the film, they're going to say that, see, that, that, that uh, Santa Barbara really put on a, 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 a surge in the second half. Uh, a lot of times you just have to give your opponents credit. But I, I like Russell Turner's team. Uh, they are a team that's fighting for an NCAA right now, and they're, they're within an arm's reach of getting there, uh, you know, showing you that kind of caliber. That breaks his string of seven consecutive free throws made by Irvine. Nobody's left yet. Everyone's on their feet. Well, we've got fans here behind us who've been outstanding yeah. all year, all, all game long. They've been out here to this team. That's, they're a big reason why this team is 10-0, about to go 11-0 at home. Look Henry, at the crowd. Henry's an 82% free throw shooter, by the way, Coach. Well, the crowd's going to step up. they got to do their job. But now this crowd's been tremendous. They've been behind us the whole time. Made it, made it uh, fun for us. Nine-point game. Fontenet 
make the short one he missed. Henry's got the rebound, and there'll be a quick foul here. And the Anteaters are 16.4 away yeah. from a 20th win. Now you can relax. I, 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 you know, there's not a lot of times that coaches can relax, but uh, this one's pretty much in the book. So, you know, big win. A huge win for UC Irvine and Russ Turner and what he's done. It's just you can see that, uh, you know, he's not calm all the time, but he's resided to the fact that he's going to get this one in the books, and it sure feels good. Then you think about next game, next game. You don't even think about that. Uh, Enjoy the ones while you can get them. And Joe Passerant, uh, great effort second half. Short little turnaround as Henry misses here. Well, knowing, One o'clock in San Diego. Knowing Russ Turner, he might have his guys in a little early tomorrow uh -huh. for some free throw uh -huh. work. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is this is a battle. These two teams have had some just tremendous matchups over the years. Henry made one of two. By the way, it's been fun, I want to say, yeah. as always. I'll see you in the Pac-12 next in a couple of weeks. Yeah, we do. We got a barn burner there. We're going to do, like, potentially the last ever meeting in the Pac-12. Henry! There's the exclamation point. Henry's got 15, and that'll do it. The Anteaters are 11-0 at home, 8-0.